Hey all you cool cats and kids. What is going on? Welcome back to Shed Built. In this episode, I'll show you how you can restore your wiring harness. So today we're going to be restoring my rear sub harness. This is for my tail lights, reverse lights and stuff. You can see the state that it's all in. This actually runs under the car here, so it's full of mud and grit and dirt. Um, here is my trailer plug. So I'm going to replace all these with Deutsch connectors. Uh, I'm going to re-loom it all, re-sheath it, uh, tidy up some of these connections and the connectors themselves. See, we've got some blue scale in some of them. But uh, first I'll show you the tools we're going to need and then we're going to start stripping this loom back. All right, so here I've laid out everything we're going to need to do a job like this. We've got our wiring diagrams. You can either have a look at these online or print them out. I like to print them out because as you can see here, I trace out all the routing uh, for where everything goes. Uh, we've got our Deutsch plugs. You don't need to use these, but they are a good thing. They're waterproof. They are a bit expensive. Alternatively, you could use just this standard connector. Uh, we've got the crimpers for the Deutsch plugs, um, just some side cutters, uh, automatic wire strippers. These are awesome. If you don't have some of these, definitely should. Um, we've got soldering wire and the soldering iron. I've also got a helping hand here, which is also pretty helpful. Just got our terminal crimpers, um, some needle nose pliers. These are good for pulling out pins and stuff. Um, a little flat blade screwdriver. These are good for de-pinning the actual pins. As you can see down there, we'll get into that. Uh, we've got some heat shrink. Get the glued line stuff. That's definitely the better, better option. Uh, I've got a, a blade. Some spare wiring just in case, um, some tape and a marker. Uh, also I'm using this cloth tape, it's also called tester tape, you might have heard of it. It's wiring loom tape, tape's better than the standard sort of shiny electrical tape and doesn't leave any residue and it's heaps stronger too, it's heaps stickier. Um, we've also got some tubing. This is the stuff that you're probably used to seeing, the split corrugated tubing. I like to use this stuff here, it's all braided. Uh, there's two kinds you can get this one which is expandable and this one which opens up so when you for the main runs and stuff but you can't take off all the pins you just want to wrap it uh, that's the stuff for that uh, we've got our harness over there we're going to start tearing into the harness and we should use all of this along the way So I've stripped back the loom, back to the bare wiring, and it's always a good idea to add these zip ties in every time there's a branch coming off the main loom for a sub harness. So you can see the different directions they go and they all remain in the same place once we get back in the car. Uh, I've done that on every single one of the branches. And now that we've done that, we're gonna start taking a look at this wire over here. You can see someone's added in a butt joint split connector. I think this one here is for the indicators. Don't know why it's there, but we're gonna have to de-pin that uh, replace that wire and then start taking a look at cleaning up some of these connections. Alright, so looking at the connector now, you can see we need to replace the middle pin on the top row. So if you have a look in here, you'll see those little tabs just at the top of the connector itself, just here. So what you want to do is get your small flat base screwdriver and just lift up that tab. Once you've got that lifted up, you should be able to just pull this pin straight out do this for looking through the camera and there we go you got that pin up now the connector will come out itself now we'll replace this wire in the center there 
All right, so I've got the wire in the helping hand. I'm just gonna snip off these connectors here and using our automatic strippers, take one of them, strip the ends only a little bit. See, there's a stopper there, this little orange thing on the side there. So we'll strip both of them to the same length. Same on this side. And now if we were to solder that together, you can see it'll be heaps further away from the actual connector. So it won't butt up or it could, but then the whole harness would be way off. So I've gone into the engine wiring bucket from all the stuff that I've stripped out of it. I'm just gonna cut a chunk out of it. It's also the same color and the same gauge as well, which is good. So cut that up and then we can solder it on. All right, now onto the soldering. When I'm soldering, I like to use this style of connection where you get the individual strands and you spread them out, kind of forming a little triangle. And you do that on both sides, like this, and then you interlock them, pinch it down, and then give it a twist. And that'll give it two types of a mechanical connection. So it'll be a heap stronger. Because that ends still exposed here. We don't have to worry about putting some heat shrink on yet. I tin the solder or the iron, place it underneath and then feed the solder into it. I leave the iron on there, make sure it feeds down through the top, right through all of those strands. Get a nice strong connection. That one's done. So let that cool naturally. And then we'll slip on our heat shrink. Get down in there. That one's done. Do the same on this side. Pull these strands back. Before we go any further, we'll put our heat shrink on actually slide it down, always slide it down on the end that you have most wire on, otherwise it will just get cooked by the soldering line. So slide that down, spread these strands, both sides. And there we are, it's all repaired. Nice strong connection, give it a tug. It's all good. Now we can feed it back in there and lock it down. Done. Back into the loom, it's good size. Matches up with everything else. Looks pretty factory. Happy with that. So we're also gonna de-pin this connector here. You can see how grimy and dirty it is. We also got a bit of blue death in there. So same thing for these female connectors, just remove the pin, pull it through, and then um, clean them all up. Now it's also a good idea to take a photo of the back of the connector, you can see which pin goes into what, save a bit of a headache later on. But this one here, I'm gonna clean them all up and the connector itself, and I'll show you how to do that. So I've got them all de-pinned now. You can see most of them aren't too bad, besides this one here, it's all covered in that blue death. Uh, the connector itself, pretty gross. But I'm going to soak that in degreaser and for these to get the, the grime and blue death off the pins I found the best way is just with a wire wheel. You can either get a wire brush by hand and scrub them by hand but I set my drill up with a wire wheel on it just clamp the drill on on a low speed and then just use that as basically a bench grinder wire wheel. All cleaned up, got no remnants of it. Try to avoid hitting the wire and the sheathing on the wire, obviously. But they're all actually pretty good. Probably re pin this now once the connector's clean. So here's the connector now, all cleaned and re pinned. See, there's no blue death, all the connections are nice and clean. I cleaned up the connector as much as I could. Uh, for the rest of these connectors, 
most of the connections themselves are actually quite clean. These are all waterproof ones that are inside the cab. So it's just the back of the wires and the connectors themselves that are a bit dirty. So I'm just gonna give them a spray with some uh, parts cleaner and then uh, give them a wipe and a brush, just clean them up a bit. And then we can look at integrating some more accessories through the loom. Right, now that we've got all the connectors cleaned up, I'm starting to work on one of the trailer harness plugs. Now I've cut off the original plug, which is this non-waterproof connector, and I'm replacing it with the Deutsch pin, a uh, Deutsch plug. I've all already gone ahead and pinned some of the wires. I've gone through my wiring harness and traced out which wire does what. And it's also a good idea to get a little notepad so you can write down and remember what does what. So uh, the factory plug only came with stop uh, headlights and reverse so I've tapped in two wires for each of the headlights because I want to integrate those as well into the loom I'm gonna go ahead and pin one of them now if you're working with thin gauge wiring like I am here uh, strip off a bit extra that you need and I always like to fold it in half so your crimp gets a better connection uh, once you get your wire sorted you can grab one of your pins uh, male or female I always just go with the male first and then slot that into your crimper Feed the wire through into it. Just like that, push it all the way down and then give it a crimp. Once you've done one, I'll pull it out a bit and then crimp that top half as well. Make sure you get a nice strong connection. Just like that and that's it, it's done. So now we've got all our wires here ready to go. We're gonna grab our plug itself and all you do with these is just Pick a pin, see on there they're all labelled or numbered. You might be able to see if it focuses. Uh, up the top here there's all numbers along them so you can correlate them once it's all said and done. I'm going to go this one in here. Push it all the way through, right through to the water proofing seal. There we go. Heard it click. Uh, we'll grab this one next. Push it through till it seats. And once we get them all in there, I'll come back and show you how to put the wedge locks in. I quickly just wrapped most of the loom in some cloth tape as you can see here and now I'll get back to this connector so this is the wedge lock which holds all the pins in place or locks them all in place just chuck that in there and then either using your finger or pliers just push it down until it locks in and that locks all your pins in there if you ever have to de-pin them it's the exact same process as I showed you before with the flat base screwdriver you just pull that wedge lock out pull the pin out and then you can slide the connector out through the back. Also pinned the other side of it. See there? And this also has another wedge lock. So that just goes over the top there. And then you're ready to go. They push in, waterproof, nice and connected. See it branches off the main loom here. Also went ahead and replaced one of the grounds because the factory terminal is a bit crusty and corroded. So I just got rid of it and replaced it with a fresh new one. I also added an extra ground in there for the trailer harness. So now that it's all wrapped up, I'll show you what you can do for the next step. I'm not gonna do it, but I'll just show you that braided loom tubing. All right, so again, here's the two types of loom tubing you can use. This is the expandable one, and here is the, the cover. So with this stuff here, the expandable, uh, they say the best way that you should cut it is with a hot knife, but I've found the best way 
for me to do it anyway, it's quicker and gets the same result. You just get a pair of scissors, find where you want to cut it, place your scissors on there like that, and then fold that in half, pinch it on either side of your scissor blade, give it a cut, hold them together, pinch them so those wraps there are still tight, and then with a lighter, just spray the ends of them, burn them in, and there you have a nice clean cut that's ready to be used. We'll get onto this loom here. So here is a scenario where you'd use the expandable because you've got no pins or anything on the end of your plug. So you just grab all the wires, pinch them together like that, and then grab one side and just feed it over. Once you get a start on it, push it and it expands and then it will slide over. So you can see it's inside and you just keep going, pushing it. Like so, all the way down. And there you have it, it's wrapped, pull it tight either side and all those wraps will interlock and it comes nice and solid. So now, so you'd obviously do that for the whole run, all the way down. And then what you want to do is grab some heat shrink. This is where the glue backed heat shrink comes in play. Cut two pieces, slide them down either side, heat shrink them on and then that'll lock it in place. So that's the expandable stuff. Um, say for something like this, where you've got all sorts of different pins all the way around but you still want to wrap the outside of the loom, that's where this stuff can come in place for like the main the main branch of the harness. So you just grab this, get it started over one side of the loom. Again, you can cut it the same way, you don't have to use a hot knife, just with the scissors and a uh, lighter. So you'll just wrap that over all the way down. And then these braids are also interlock once they meet each other on the other side so already that's pretty nice and strong but what you can do again is just grab your cloth tape and then just tape either sides the same way we did with the expandable braiding but for this harness here for this wiring i'm not going to wrap it, any of it i'm just going to leave it in the cloth tape it's way under the car this is more dress <coughs> sort of protective sheathing so it's really not needed in this case but thought I'd just give you guys a rundown on how it's how it works and how it's used and what sort of scenario you'd use it in but um, now that it's all wrapped up I've also redone the sub harnesses for the lights themselves so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it and just double check it all works alright so I've got the harness back in there now see everything's working we've got our headlights on which is probably a bit hard to see because it's a bit bright the indicators are working, uh, we have good strong connections so we know we did a decent job because there's no flickering or anything. But those bare wires that I was showing you the expandable braiding on, that was for these lights down here and then the trailer plug comes out through here somewhere on the Deutsch connector. But now that we've got all this wrapped up I just want to give you guys a couple of shots of the 12HT harness I did and the different techniques I used throughout that you would have seen throughout this video.
All right, and that is it for another episode. I do just want to say that this is just one way of doing it. This is the way I like to do it anyway. Uh, if your wires are all corroded or they're stiff, then obviously you just use them. Your original wiring harness as a guide, you'd lay over new wires on top of it and then trim them all to fit and repin them. Now, with that said, I will leave some links in the description where you can pick up some of the sheathing that I used. And let me know if you found anything in this video useful. Uh, I might try and make this sort of quick tech informational video on all sorts of different topics moving forward in the future. But stick around for next week's episode, like, subscribe, you know the deal, and I will see you next time. Cheers for watching.